And recently, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce, two former Boston Celtics, were having a debate about who the best player in the Eastern Conference will be ahead of the start of this campaign. And Kevin Garnett said it's either Joel Embiid or uh, Jason Tatum. Mentioned uh, Giannis Dedekumpo. Paul Pierce said, no, it's not Joel Embiid. It's either Tatum or Giannis. And it was a fun back and forth discussion because Paul Pierce, man, he has these, these eyes that are only green and they only go forward in that one way. Where as much as I criticize Kevin Garnett, I never take away from the fact that he's a Hall of Famer and a great player, worthy of everything that people discuss. You can talk about where he ranks all the time, all that. That's just normal basketball discussion. But at least in this one, he's being honest and talking about how Joel B. he's like, look, no, Joel, I don't care who I play for. Joel B. might be the best player in the Eastern Conference, especially with Giannis being exited, knocked out in the first round the past two seasons. And B, second round, first round the past two seasons. Uh, but it just got to a discussion of, hey, man, should we talk about this, Derek? And we probably should, of going into the start of this year, having the help with Maxi, with George, the revamp roster that they've put together we've already said they probably have a better team than milwaukee from top to bottom because of the depth and also needing to see what damian Lillard looks like year two chris middleton yeah. being healthy what these other pieces look like you now have gary trent jr there brooke lopez looked like he's taking a bit of a step back at least last season he did so i thought it was an interesting discussion we thought it was an interesting discussion of is mb minus championship is indeed the best player in the Eastern Conference as we get ready to walk into 24-25. Yeah, look, I guess where I'm going to start this, we'll just start off with cross him off the list then. Jason Tatum does not belong in this conversation. It Whoa, is, and, and he look, won the championship. Well, and that was both of their reasoning. And look, I understand Paul Pierce, <laughs> like you said, the Celtics, you know, glasses that he's looking uh, through the worldview. They are strong. And Garnett, too, I guess, a little bit. A little Both bit. of them, their justification was, well, they just won a championship, which is so prisoner of the moment. And look, I would think Kevin Garnett, as someone who was, you know, the lack of playoffs, playoff success plagued him, dogged him, like ruined his reputation for the first, what, eight, ten years of his career yes. until he got to Boston. Yes. I yep. would think someone like that would have a different perspective than just like, well, this guy won, so clearly he's the best player among those three. First of all, Giannis has won as well. And you're talking about Giannis with two MVPs and two defensive player of the years and bead with an MVP and Tatum with none of that. So if it's just about winning, then, you know, Giannis has more, frankly, uh, just as much of a case as Tatum and he's a better player. And that to me, like, it's one thing I, I don't think you can completely remove postseason from it. Specifically when you start talking about a player's performance, individual performance in the postseason but when you because I, th I think Joel Embiid you know, like you do dock him a little bit for the fact that, that regular season success I think in the regular season he is the best of those three players right now and I don't think it's particularly close I would understand somebody docking him because his regular season individual performance has not translated to the playoffs at the rate you would want I think there's reasons for that we talk about those reasons a lot from injury to team construction um, but I understand at least that viewpoint but just the, well, those Celtics won, so Tatum has to be number one. No, if you put Giannis, a specifically healthy Giannis, on that team, I think he could figure out a way to win with that team, too. I think Joel Embiid could figure out a way to win with that team, too. The fact that Tatum has a better supporting cast, and quite frankly, a cast that carried him at various points throughout this playoff run, does not automatically vault him as a better player. It means he was in a better situation. And look, at various points of the past couple of years, when I've Fill out Tim Bontemps straw poll. I've had Tatum in my top five. Usually somewhere in that five through eight range. So I'm not completely, you know, dumping on Tatum here. Uh, apologies if that was a pause, but I want to say a different word and I'm trying to keep it clean. So I didn't say the, the S word that I was really thinking. Of. What's up, Roku <laughs> TV? What's going on? <laughs> but I look, so I'm not completely against Tatum. I'm just against him in this top three player in the world conversation. And really, when I look at this conversation, obviously you had like the Steph, KD, LeBron era. And I don't want to necessarily say that that era is over because all of them are still playing at incredible levels, but they're not dominating the league like they were in the late teens. This era, the 20s, is about Jokic and Giannis and Embiid. 
Tatum's just not in that. You're one hundred percent right. Yeah, he's not as good of a player. I'm sorry. So yes, I give him a lot of credit for the team's success. I give the Celtics a lot of credit for building an absolute juggernaut of a team, and I give Tatum a lot of credit for, quite frankly, a player that I didn't love coming out of college, coming out of Duke, developing into one of the five to ten best players in the world. He's just not a top three. No, he, he's not. But um, now look, when we're talking the East, is he top three? Because what? Who are the other candidates? Jalen Brunson, Donovan. Mitchell, oh, he might be. He might be top three. Jalen Brown. Yeah. And Honestly, so the, the, East, the biggest competition is some of his teammates. Yeah, Jalen Brown, and yeah. and and that's it. Well, you know, Drew Holiday and Derek White for what they do, but they're the two. And Jalen Brown, that could be a conversation. We've already seen some others mention him in there as well. But when it comes to the East, he is. In that top five, it's just a matter of where you Jalen Brunson did get his team to the finals. Well, he also got hurt too, so he didn't get a chance to face off in, in that finals against the Boston Celtics to actually see what he would do and how he would carry. But yeah, I think it's between Giannis and Embiid. And the one thing that Tatum and Embiid have, if we don't ignore the playoff success, is they too have championships 21 and 20, uh, 23. Both of those two have, or, or 24, both of those two have won championships with Joel Embiid has not but it doesn't mean that going into the start of the season of how how we look look at him look at this team being a, a finalist in the MVP conversation the last what four of the last five years because of how yeah. good he was if he wasn't injured last season he probably would have been there again because most of us thought he was at least in the lead when he went down uh, it, it's a good discussion to to have it's always a fun one to have uh, of what they're, they're going to look like because it was really the consensus was always no Giannis is better Number one, he won a championship. Uh, he doesn't miss games. That's number two. And he performs in the postseason, even if he's knocked out in the second or third round, where Embiid is normally knocked out in that second round, and he's not getting his team passed. We can look at some numbers where he hasn't performed well enough to push them over the top to get to that Eastern Conference Finals, where Giannis has done so. But to the point of what Garnett was saying, he has been knocked out in the first round the past two seasons. Injury aside, that's not his fault because we've seen him perform, but he has been knocked out. We've seen other things where we've looked at him and it, it, we can point out certain things in games now where we're like, all right, Giannis just doesn't look right anymore. Not the physicality and getting to the rim and finishing. It's some of the other things where now he's uh, chasing people and being all ticked off about this because he doesn't get the basketball after breaking the, the record of Milwaukee where another team didn't notice it or the, the ladder gate here in Philadelphia a, a couple of seasons ago where those things are not highlighted as much when Embiid would do it those things are pointed out now that's not necessarily play it's just more of when we looked at Giannis we always looked at the fun loving hard working yeah. look at how he got here and won it does Embiid almost seem like that's like too it does almost seem like the responsibility of winning a championship and competing for that every year has like taken his, you know, obsessiveness about mm -hmm. competing and ramped it to up to a point where it might level. be, it might just, it might be a little, I won't say destructive, but it might be a little bit kind of perfect. It might be dialed up a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look, the guy's still going to be a top three player uh, being injured, not qualifying as much as he wanted to in the, uh, for the Olympics this past uh, run in the summer also you know he's going to be back he's going to be ready he's getting married all right if we talk about marriage and all these things changing Joel and B uh, is is does the lack of success in the Olympics does that ramp it up for him a little bit more the fact that he's not talked about as much maybe as that top player in the Eastern Conference and quite frankly in the NBA as a champion does that give him that extra motivation Derek that you just talked about where he uses that and overly obsesses over that but he uses that and he bottles it up for the good, like we saw these years before where it resulted in an NBA championship, multiple MVPs, defensive player of the year conversation, all of those things that he comes back. And quite frankly, I think that that's going to be the case. I think he's going to come back. He's going to be hungry. He's going to be ready. And he's going to want to knock down the Sixers for putting this team together. The Knicks are being talked about them more. The Boston Celtics just won and the Milwaukee Bucks did not. All of those things are going to come into play with the healthy Chris Middleton, the failure of seeing Drew Holiday not there and going to win again, Damian Lillard not having that success. All of those things will, I think, be a big part of Giannis's, Giannis's best foot forward for this upcoming season and try to re be right back in that conversation to push him right back up top where we're talking about him with Embiid and Tatum and, and the rest. So full training camp with Glenn Rivers. See how that thing lay, plays out 
I yes. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I love your dedication to Glenn. Uh, I need to get on that same page. Uh, it's just have habit. To. Habit still has me calling him the other name, uh, <laughs> but I appreciate you and Zoo for that. Or just say Rivers. Yeah, just say Rivers. That's easy too. You don't need that everybody. Guy. Everyone knows who you're talking about when we're speaking of the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's going to be a good one. Uh, so real fast, top five or at least top four in the East: Brunson, Giannis, hmm. Embiid, Tatum. No particular order. Who's the fifth? Is it is it Donovan Mitchell? Is it Jimmy Butler? Is it someone else? Jalen Brown. Is it Jalen Brown? Yeah. I that that's Good my bad. Question. Not even mentioning him. I think I agree with your top four. And I think look, at the top, I know this is a Sixers show, so I'm supposed to say Joel Embiid. And I think in the regular season, Joel Embiid has been the better player the last couple of years. And I know that Giannis is has ended the season with injuries the last two years. I still think if we're being honest, we trust his health and his conditioning and the way he takes care of his body a little more than we trust Joel Embiid and a string of lower body injuries. And his playoff track record, despite the last two years, which again has been frustrating, is greater than that of Joel Embiid. I could see you go either way with that. Uh, so I think that's one and one A in that regard. You might prefer to build around one archetype over the other, um, but... They're both, I think, worthy of being in that discussion. And they're the only two of this group that I think are worthy of being in that, this discussion. And that was a point I tried to hammer, on, hammer home early on. Three, I would go Jason Tatum. And four, I think Brunson, given what he did this past year, is deserving of that. Maybe not the long-term track record of that, but what he did last year deserves that. Yeah, so... After people, that is real interesting. It is. Do because you put Jimmy because he coasts in the regular season and just didn't have a chance to prove it in a mm -hmm. playoffs, but he's he's old. Do you put Jalen Brown, despite the fact that he only has one functional handle with the dribble? But he won a, a MVP. His defense and shooting and his shot creation and frankly carried them at times last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably err towards Jalen, but I think there's arguments for a, a couple people on that fifth spot. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell being one of them. Yep. Nope. Um, and if, if Mitchell, I think, had a and this is where the team construction hurts a little bit. If Mitchell had maybe a more a team that made a little bit more sense around him and had a chance to show that a little bit more in the playoffs, it would probably be easier. So do you reward the Celtics for having a super team? It's it's an it's an interesting discussion. I saw someone else mention Tyrese Halliburton in the chat. Not yet. Uh Dave Dewar says, Do you go Halliburton over Brown? I, I would not. Brown Brown basically won that championship for them and uh he, he walked away with the finals mvp so i think you give that one to Jalen brown over tyree talbert and as good as he is as as talented as he is and what's what's on the horizon for tyree talbert and i would still yeah. lean i think i, I think Jaylen i would brown. go brown as well i agree with that yep all right and well, what's uh five you didn't give me you didn't, you didn't give me um five so it, it's mb Giannis, tatum top three Jalen brunson no doubt about it in that fourth spot and I would give it to Jalen Brown at the five because of what he did with the struggles that Jason Tatum did have. And everybody's scorching Jason Tatum. Part of the reason why they got there is because Jalen Brown took it up a notch. He took it up a big time notch, picked it up a level that locked that 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 championship in. We know the importance of Drew Holiday, Derek White, Al Horford. We already understand that, but they would not have won that championship. And quite frankly, again, Tatum had a great final game. Jason Tatum had a great run to the finals and played well in the finals to secure that finals MVP. So my fifth would be would be Brown in in, in that order. Y'all city like the mayor.